All right, let's talk about the benefits of bromelain. Now, bromelain's been in the media a lot lately, a lot of discussion about what it can, what maybe it can't do. And I kind of want to break those things down based off really the evidence that we have to this point. So first of all, bromelain, as you're probably aware, uh, we see high concentrations in pineapple, particularly in the center of the pineapple, but it's a glycoprotein. And that's a fancy way of saying it's got a carbohydrate chain attached to a protein molecule. Now, as far as the evidence for what it does, there's five main benefits that I can find. Uh, these are going to be kind of broader overview. I'm not going to get into specific disease states, but this can kind of let you know the potential of what bromelain can do in your body. So first of all, pretty confident that it does contain anti-inflammatory properties. However, there's some confusion around exactly how that happens because we don't know if you can get high concentrations outside of the GI tract. And that's because we believe that the body will kind of break the bromelain down outside of that environment. However, we do know that rather than bromelain decreasing inflammatory compounds like prostaglandins and bradykinin, what we think it's doing is that it's most likely increasing interferon gamma. Um, fancy way of saying that's part of that inflammatory process, keeping it in check. So we do think it's doing that. So anti-inflammatory appears to be a proven benefit. The next one, uh, it's actually been looked at in cancer. I want to point out uh, this is done in a lab. Okay, we, we don't have good results in people per se, but in vitro, we do see that it can suppress or, or keep the growth of leukemia cells in, in a Petri dish, essentially. It can suppress that, which is good. We believe, and we'll talk about this in a second, that it's related to its ability to break up fibrin, uh, also its ability to increase AMP concentrations. AMP is kind of a breakdown product of ATP, which is our energy source. Uh, another area that it's shown promise in is cleaning up wounds. Again, we're coming back to that fibrinolytic activity. It's breaking up those proteins in the wounds and helping with that. Uh, another benefit that it's been looked at is in GI disorders. Again, I want to point out this is in a lab setting. This is not in people per se, but it's promising what we think it's doing and what we've seen is that when people get something like cholera or an E. coli infection, it can help with the GI fluid secretion or essentially when people are suffering from this terrible diarrhea, we believe bromelain, at least in the lab, can help in a situation like that. And finally, a big one that's been studied a lot is its effects in our blood overall. And in particular, we can see that bromelain does inhibit platelets clumping together or that platelet aggregation that we're getting that it's part of that blood clotting process it can inhibit that uh, and again we do see in the blood it can inhibit growth of malignant cells this this is going back to our discussion about cancer uh, but again we definitely see the ability for bromelain to break up fibrin and those clots that sort of thing so um, make sure I have other therapies that I talk about a lot at my website. There's a free checklist there of other therapies like this. If you're interested in what bromelain can do, some of these other therapies would be helpful in that regard. It's free. Just go there, sign up. I'll get that over to you. Let me know in the comments, guys, if there's other topics that you'd like me to cover. If you've ever taken bromelain, did you experience benefit, any of these or even things that aren't listed here. I would love to hear about that. Helpful for me, helpful for anybody that watches the video to hear from your experience. So speaking of helpful, I hope this was. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.